Still small voice cries out. It's MK. This afternoon's video is a really quick revisit to a Sim Session YouTube video that I did several months ago uh, when we were still using Pro Stitcher Standard. But it came up on one of the boards some questions about doing multiple select and how do you accomplish that in premium so that you can duplicate things and do whatever it was that we were doing in that old video that was done in Standard. So I thought it would be a good opportunity this afternoon to just kind of work through that same example using premium. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a block from several other blocks that we have in our collection. And for Pro Stitcher owners, you should have these three designs free with your Pro Stitcher uh, system. All right, so we're going to start first by using this pretty Dresden block by K Kimmy Brunner and we're just going to open up that block. Now what we're attempting to do in this in this example is basically to build ourselves one master block that maybe we would stitch out on a quilt or maybe we would stitch it out as a little whole cloth but what we want to do is create that in simulation as one block and be able to stitch it with uh, you know between the jumps okay so be able to stitch it as one design even though we might have some jumps in that in that stitch out okay so I just opened up the block what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an area that matches this block all right so we're going to go ahead and make our two corner area the same exact size as our block all right, so the block is 15. We're just going to go ahead and make the area 15. Now, the block is not centered inside of that area. It's the only thing open on our screen. So we're going to go ahead and just do a modify a line, and we're going to center it in the center. Now, really quickly, I want you to go ahead and open up your workspace because what I have found to be one of the most amazing things about Pro Stitcher Premium is this ability to work with workspace. Now I do cover a lot of tips and techniques with using workspace in my layout and rendering series but what I can tell you is that working with workspace is helpful for a couple of main things. The first thing is that you can see what you're working on. You can see the names of the designs. And the other thing is if you don't like or are not fond of the names of the designs, you can very easily rename them, okay? We do that a lot in my layout and rendering series because in those tutorials, in those videos, I am showing you how to create elements for your quilt that you're going to need to stitch out later. Okay, so that's the whole premise of my layout and rendering instruction is to use simulation, which is what I'm working in right now, to set up your quilt so that it's ready for you when you go to stitch it. Well, think about that for a second. Some of the names that these patterns have as default may or may not be easy for you to identify later when you go to stitch your quilt. So I do a lot of renaming of my designs when I work layout and rendering. Okay, so you can of course check out all of that instruction over on my website. For today, we're not going to do a lot of renaming. We're just going to build this block really quickly and we're just going to keep the names what they uh, originally were. Okay? All right. So, next thing is I want to go ahead and fill in my triangles, some triangles out into the corner. Okay? I had chosen this very simple triangle. Again, it's free in the Pro Stitcher library. Just going to open it up. I like to work on the right hand top side as my starting corner and then work around the block in clockwise order. That's kind of how I do things. It's kind of a repetitive thing with me. I'm a creature of habit, so I, I tend to do things the same way most of the time. All right, so my triangle is open. I'm going to go ahead and modify. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and then I'm going to align it to the right and to the top. Now that my alignment is locked, I can go ahead and resize the triangle to the size that it needs to be. Okay, I don't need to know what size the triangle needs to be. I can just let my simulator or my Pro Stitcher system help me to determine that size. 
All right, once I have determined that size, I'm going to go ahead and baseline. Now I want to go ahead and duplicate or repeat this triangle into the other three corners. Now here's where there's a couple different things that you need to think about. And once again, I'm going to open up my workspace. The first thing that I want you to think about is if you are just creating something for a quilt or a block that you want to use later and you're really just using your simulator to plan out the block and lay it out so that you get kind of a visual of what it's going to look like, these next steps aren't really that critical as far as what order you do them in. Now, if you're creating like a whole cloth, so you want this block to be something that you're going to actually stitch out as one complete unit, then you probably do want to think a little bit about stitch order. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and complete these triangles into the corner, and I'm not really going to worry about stitch order right at the moment. Okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that triangle. I'm going to go ahead and hit duplicate. I'm going to hit rotate. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees to the right. Click on that twice. And then I'm going to go ahead and align it to the right and to the bottom. Okay, what did I just say? I'm not really concerned about stitch order right now. I just kind of want to build this block so that I can see how it looks. All right, so the quickest way to get these triangles over onto this side is really going to be to select them together and duplicate them together and align them over here together. Rather than doing that once here and once here, how about we just go ahead and and do it together. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our work, open up our workspace. Now we want to select both of these triangles at once. So we're going to use the multiple select tool down here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and select that first one. We'll select the second one. Now they're both selected. Now the reason why I am choosing to do this on the workspace, do my selection off of the workspace, is that sometimes when you're using simulation like I do, and you're working with a lot of designs at once, and maybe some of them are layered over the top of other ones, it's hard to select them if you try to select it over here in the middle part of your screen. Screen. It's much, much easier to select them off of the workspace. Okay, so that's tip number one. Now, there's two different ways that you can approach this. What we can do right now is we can duplicate these guys together. So I'm just going to click on duplicate. So it duplicated them, but now clearly they're not in the right orientation to be placed over here on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to rotate. And right up here at the top, we have a new feature now in Premium that allows us to rotate things as single units if we have them selected together, or we can rotate them as a grouping. So why don't we go ahead and select grouping, and now when we do modify rotate, and let's go ahead and mirror that around, now they are they have been rotated as a grouping. I just want to double check their alignment, so I'm going to go align to the left and to the top. That should align them okay. Now if we go over and look on our workspace, what you're going to see is that it kind of made those items a grouping. And I don't necessarily want them as a grouping right now, so I'm going to deselect my multiple select tool, and then I'm going to do a select none. All right, so what you're going to see is that original set of designs that we selected together and made a grouping, it's still grouped together over here. But I don't necessarily want that to be a grouping if I'm going to stitch these independently. So I, am, I opened up the grouping, and what I'm going to do is select none, and that should deselect those items as a grouping. Now, again, we should have just four separate triangle units. All right, so there's the first corner that we created. Here's the second corner that we created. Here's the third, and there's the fourth. Now, that might not be the order in which we want to stitch it. Just a really quick side note. If you want to rearrange your stitch order, 
these little arrows right here are the way that you do that. So if you wanted to rearrange the way in which these were stitched, you would have to select them again using your multiple select tool. So I'm going to go ahead and start with, with nothing at all selected. Then I'm going to click on my multiple select tool and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select them in the order that I want them to be stitched. I'm going to skip down to this one because that was the third one and then I'm going to go back up to that one. That was the fourth one. Now I chose again as I mentioned in the beginning I chose not to rename those items as I was duplicating them because this is a very small project. When I work large layouts, layouts that have maybe multiple designs in the center, multiple rounds of a border that I'm building, I always choose to rename those items so that I can more easily identify what is what, okay? But now we have these in the correct order. So the first little tip about stitch order is do your multiple select in the order in which you want them to be stitched. Okay, so the order in which you select them using your multiple select tool, that is the order in which they will be stitched. Now, if you want to change the order of that stitching, you can click on whichever one of these uh, patterns that you want to change the order of, and you select it, and then you can move it either up or down in the the list okay I don't know that I would want number three to be stitched first and then back to number one and two and so on but you get the idea uh, one thing about that if you are going to use Pro Stitcher to do your stitch order, you're probably going to want to rename your items, which we didn't do in this case, but it's probably going to be much easier for you had you named this top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, because then it would be very much simpler, right, to select those things and move them up or down in the stitch order. Okay, for the purposes of this uh, exercise, we're not really talking about stitch order. We're just really talking about laying out a block so that we can kind of see how it looks. Okay, I actually like how this looks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull in our last design and I'm going to pull in this little heart hearts all around again that's a free block in the handy quilter designs library my my uh, area box is still open I'm just gonna go modify align gonna align that to the center now that the alignment is locked we can go ahead and go to modify resize and we can go ahead and just shrink it down until it fits in the center now at this point if I was going to be stitching this as a complete design I would be thinking about stitch order. For me personally, I don't do a lot of stitch order in, in Pro Stitcher. I do a lot of stitch order using Art and Stitch. It's called Resequence in the Art and Stitch program, and I will usually do a lot of my resequencing or my determining my stitch order using that other program. But I wanted to mention it here because you absolutely can change the stitch order of your designs from right within the Pro Stitcher uh, application okay so this looks really good to me now the one thing that uh, another thing that I would probably do if I was really gonna stitch this out I just turned off my area box so that you can see that these triangles they kind of they're point-to-point -point triangles and in the manner in which they are right now their little stems kind of stick out and they kind of like they don't really connect up to anything else because we put them in the corner right so what I would probably do is take these these triangles this whole design I would take it into art and stitch I would connect up the triangles so that they stitched as one design rather than four separate triangles and then I would determine what I wanted to stitch first I think if I probably did this design I would start in the center I would start 
by stitching that little heart motif. Then I would stitch the Dresden design and ultimately I would stitch the triangles as one entire uh, connected design along the outside edge. So why don't I go ahead and do that. I'll pop it back here into Pro Stitcher and let you watch it stitch out. Okay, so that is just a little bit about using the multiple select tool. A few tips and techniques about renaming your designs if you want to do that. And then about using the stitch order buttons from within Pro Stitcher. All right, hope that was helpful. Until next time, it's MK. Happy quilting. Bye-bye. So what I decided to do here was just let you watch a little bit as I worked through these next steps of taking this into Art and Stitch. So basically I just saved this as a design once I had the block built. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Art and Stitch and I'm gonna connect those triangles that we spoke about. So here I've just transitioned over into Art and Stitch on my laptop and I'm opening up the design that I created in my simulator. So all I'm doing right now is I'm selecting each one of those outer triangles and now I'm going to connect the object and you can do that by either right clicking or clicking on the connect object icon over there on the left hand side. And now rather than four triangles, you have one design connected together. I didn't want it open there on the bottom, so I did a right click and I closed that line so that it made it one complete design. Now I'm going into the resequence tool that I told you about and I'm selecting the center design and then the Dresden and then finally the outer triangles. The last thing that I decided to do after I checked the stitch path was add a triangle or rather add a square all the way around the entire design so that it was completely enclosed with a separate square around it and that would be included in the stitching. Now you could skip this step if you wanted to but I actually wanted to have a square around the entire design. Right now I'm just adjusting the size of everything making sure that the design was 15 inches, the square was 15 inches, I aligned everything to the center and then I and moving into just saving the entire design as one new pattern. And there you have it. And I was just checking the stitch path one more time just to make sure that I had gotten everything. Looks pretty good. And here we go, I'm just saving it to an HQF file so that I can go ahead and open it back up in my Pro Stitcher. So what I'm doing here is I'm saving the workspace back at my Pro Stitcher just because I want to make sure that if I want to go back to those designs or make any changes that I had saved that. I probably won't, but it's a good thing to save it. So I just cleared off the screen and now I'm opening up the version of the pattern that I connected and resequenced and did all of those steps in Art and Stitch, pulled it back into Pro Stitcher, and now it's ready to be stitched. And what I'm doing right now is just showing you that in Art and Stitch, we resequenced starting from the center, working outward. And if I run my simulator now through this new pattern that we created, you're going to see that it's going to start in the center. That's what I told it to do in Art and Stitch. And I'm not going to let this whole entire thing stitch. What I'm going to do is just stop in between each little section here and jump through to the next start point and show you that, yep,
the, that was the second part of the pattern that I resequenced in Art and Stitch. And that looks good. So as you can see, you guys, I really prefer the Art and Stitch for doing my resequencing and my stitch order steps, but it's totally doable in Pro Stitcher. I know some of you aren't quite there with the Art and Stitch part of all of this yet, and that is completely fine. And that's one of the things that I love about this is there, generally speaking, is several ways to accomplish the same thing. So you can absolutely do that stitch order change, make those stitch order changes right from Pro Stitcher, or you can take it into Art and Stitch. Now I know I went through those steps very quickly in Art and Stitch. Uh, many people have asked me, am I going to start teaching Art and Stitch classes? At this point, that's not in the plan, but there are a few things that I have learned about Art and Stitch that make my job with my Pro Stitcher so much quicker and so much easier. So it, it definitely is worth the time to Check out online some of the, the different instructors that offer online classes. For sure, if you have any events going on in your area and there's anybody there teaching Art and Stitch, it's, it's definitely a very powerful program. I don't even use it to near its capacity, but what I do know helps me a great deal with my Pro Stitcher functionality. Now what I'm doing here on the screen is basically just showing you that now that we have one design, we can go ahead and skew that into a block on our quilt. And you're going to see here, I'm, I'm purposely making things a little wonky and it's hard to kind of do this in simulation without having a quilt block as a reference. But you'll see I'm just marking, I'm marking a block on the screen using my multi-point mark. We have one design now, so we don't have uh, one, two, for we don't have six different designs now we have one design that has been created together and now we can skew it into a block that may be a little bit less than square and now we can use that block as one pattern and just stitch it out as one design rather than having to place several designs to accomplish that so I hope again you guys that this was helpful and try out some of this post what you've created and thanks for joining me on this video. It's MK. Bye-bye.